Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, live from Harlem in New York City, it's me, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Larry Bubbles Brown, yay. Hey. How, how are you? <laughs> Good. I just hope you're doing well. Oh, I'm doing okay. I'm surviving, you know. Uh, did I tell you I took a horrible fall? I'd heard that, so I emailed you, and uh, t- what? So I don't know the details. Well, I I, I was walking uh, down the street or up the street or right in front of my apartment, actually, and all of a sudden I go taking another fall. I've been doing this lately, and I fall flat on my face, oh, and bloodied up everything on my face. It's amazing. But it's amazing now also that uh, about uh, two weeks later, it's all gone. You know, I, I look okay. But I was, oh, it was terrible. It was horrible. So, you know. You have to go to the ER? No, no. I didn't because I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't hit my head and I didn't have any headaches or anything like that. So, you know, what, whatever. So... You know, I didn't do anything. And you don't know? Do you, did you trip, or you don't know? I tripped. I did whatever I do when I fall. I mean, I don't. It's weird. It's all of a sudden you see you're falling. You know. And so I've gotten to the point now where I'm afraid to even take a, a walk outdoors. You know, I have this PTSD. Yeah, well, a fall is a very scary thing. Yeah. Do you have you ever fallen? I fall uh, about once a year when I'm running, and it's because when you're running, you're kind of hunched forward. Yeah. So if I just hit the slightest bump or something, I'm done. But so I'm very, I'm very careful about it. But it does happen about once a year. Wow. And and have you hurt yourself when you fell? And not seriously. I just know you always throw your arm out. So that's uh, that's why people usually break their wrist. They said that's the most that bone is broken more than any other bone in your body. The really? Wrist. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't throw my uh, uh, thing out or whatever. But anyway, so that's the st- uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, it's a very scary feeling when you're going down. Well, we're going to go to Paris for like five days in in, in November, the beginning of November, and uh, I'm afraid to go. I'm afraid to walk. I don't think I can walk anymore. I've gotten to the point where I just I go out and I I I feel I can't walk. You know, it's horrible. And I'm I've got this PT, but I had to cancel it the other day because I um, why was it I canceled it? There was some reason I canceled it. I had to, I had something and I was, I was kind of feeling sick and I so I didn't go. But I've still got to go to my first PT. And I just don't know if they're going to do anything. You know, they give me these exercises to do, and the exercises don't do anything. I stopped doing them because I was doing the exercises religiously, and then I fell. You know? <laughs> well, what incentive is that to do the PT? Right. You know? I mean, I really want some help where my my equilibrium is, is worked on. And... Uh, uh, I don't know the, the, the stuff they have me doing just doesn't seem to do much of anything. I mean, there's one, there's one exercise where you stand up and you're in front of like a counter in the kitchen, and you put one foot in back of the other and you hold it that way for thirty seconds. But I mean, you're holding on to the counter. It's not. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, Sounds they, like a waste of time to me. Yeah. So anyway, so what's new with well, maybe you? Maybe it's uh, what? what? Were you were you taking some meds? Or you said we're making you a little loopy. Well, yeah, I take a, a thing called a gabapentin, uh, not gabapentin, but pregabalin, 
which, uh, you know, it makes me a little, uh, um, un you know, it throws off my equilibrium, but that shouldn't be doing it. That shouldn't be causing the falling. But I don't know. What do I know? What do I know? But I, well, I, you don't want to. You don't want to break a hip. So. Well, you know, eventually I'll break a hip if I'm old enough. You know, so, you, you know, people break their hip, and next thing you know, they're dying. And it's a uh, yeah, very high percentage if you break your hip over a certain age. Yeah. I don't understand why. Yeah, I don't know either. But <laughs> you know, my hip gets broken, I die. Wait a minute. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> Doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. So I probably get, just a plan to get rid of old people. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know. Oh, he broke a hip. Let's put him out. You know. Let's put him, put him down. Put him. Put him <laughs> down. Yeah. So anyway, what's new in the wonderful world of Larry Bubbles Brown? Anything? Absolutely nothing. I did. Uh, I didn't do comedy day this year. I heard there's like, I don't think they get a thousand people for that anymore. Why, why didn't you do it? Just because it isn't worth it to do anymore, or what? It's, I didn't feel that great, and I just thought, yeah, it's not really... Uh, you know how like big those crowds used to be. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't involve myself in Comedy Day much. I mean, you, you came out to one of them, I remember that. Yeah, and then I never did again, and there was a reason why. I didn't like what what it had turned into, you know? Well, it got too big, yeah. Got too big, but they're only drawing a thousand people now. It's yeah, almost not worth doing. No, I don't know. It's kind of sad, but is Debbie Durr still the head of it? Yeah, she's still in charge of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess the reason you do it is for Debbie. You know. Right. Right. As she's such a nice and sweet person, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, so you did, you didn't do comedy day? No. Yeah. And I've got very few gigs, and I don't like doing stand up, so uh, I don't know what to do. What do you mean you got very few gigs? I thought you were working on a fairly regular basis. I just work with uh, the guys I work with, like Rob and Felipe and Dana, but they're not doing much lately, and. Uh, Actually, Felipe was out of the country, and I didn't want to go high. Duck. I can't. He went to Australia, a 16-hour flight. Yeah, did he want to take you with him? He didn't ask, and I was hoping he wouldn't because I didn't want to. I talked to the guy that went with him, and he said that it was a 16-hour flight, and he said he was, if he didn't have edibles, he would have blown his brains out. <laughs> well, I've taken 16-hour flights. and you Really? Know, wow. Yeah, I, what I do is I usually take, like, a, a pill to put me to sleep, you know, so that takes care of about eight hours of the trip, you know, and then and you, you got get... eight more to kill. Yeah, but you know, part of that is lunch, and you can watch a movie, or you can do any number of things. I mean, I went to China. That was a 16-, 17-hour flight. And it went I forgot. By, yeah, you did. It yeah. went by pretty fast, actually. It's just that, you know, you don't want to do a, a, one of those flights because you're going there for to stay for two or three days, you know. You want to take that kind of trip because, like, we went over for two weeks to China. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's worth taking that amount of time to get there. But uh, so that was my... My, my whole deal with, with traveling. So you you, you got to be careful about uh, those long flights. You get blood clots from sitting so long. Well, I, uh, don't, I don't think that's a, a, a general possibility unless you you're, have a propensity to blood clots in the first place. You know. And at least if you get a blood clot, it's something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Something you can talk about. Hey, well, I took this flight and I got a blood clot. Yeah. You know, the only value to me falling was that I can constantly talk about it. You know, so. It's a good story. <laughs> it's a good story. I can keep. You know what's interesting? And you may remember from my show. My whole show was basically what did Alex do today? You know? If something happened to me, I would then tell a story right. about it. And I would maybe, 
I could go on for a half an hour on one story, and the story was nothing, you know. I went to the aquarium. Now I don't do anything. <laughs> I have I nothing, know the feeling. I have nothing to talk about. Absolutely nothing. And so consequently, I really wish I did have something to talk about. But then I don't. It's just impossible. It's ridiculous. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's yeah. my life. It's, it's a very boring, dull existence. And I'm 84, so there's not much I can do. I mean, I'm afraid to go out because I'm afraid of falling. And uh, we're supposed to go on a vacation to Paris, but I'm dreading that because I have to walk through the airport, you know. Are you going to cancel it? No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weather the storm, you know. If worse comes to worse and I find I can't negotiate the airport well, I'll just ask them to give me a wheelchair. And yeah. Then, and then you zip through everything. Right. Do, do that. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I still have to figure out what to do. I don't know. I, you know. But Marjorie wanted to go to Paris for five days for her birthday, so I said, okay, you know, why not? But I don't... Then, uh, yeah, we got nothing to talk about, because you used to have the legal battle, then that got resolved. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing to talk about anymore, folks. I'm just absolutely <laughs> boring. You know, I can't talk about, oh, hey, I went out somewhere for dinner and I went to this restaurant and uh, it was a terrible dinner that I had at the restaurant. I could do I could do a half hour on a horrible restaurant I went to the night before. We don't do anything. Well, a trip to Paris will give you a lot of material. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially if I fall in Paris. Maybe you can fall at the Eiffel Tower. I don't yeah. Know. Is your leg hurting? We. Oui. I, I, I know how to say certain French words. So. Yeah. Have you been there before? Oh, to Paris? Oh, yeah, a lot. A lot. Is you, it great? You, well, usually Paris has been my jumping off point for other places. Okay. Everybody wants to go to Paris. I don't know why. Paris is, can I say, a singularly wonderful city. Really. I mean, really? It, it's just... There's just something about it that's just, it, it's just a beautiful city. You know, you've got, you've got this uh, river running through it, you know, and you've got things like Notre Dame when it's open, you know, and, and, and you've got, uh, I love the museums. I mean, I got, love the Musée d'Orsay, which has all the, uh, all the Matisses and the Monets and the Van Gogh. And, uh, you know, it's a, one of the world's great museums. So, yeah, Paris is really, you know, it, it's a wonderful city. It, it feels great. It has a, a wonderful feel to it. And then, you know, all the little cafes you can stop and have coffee at and so on. And it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, if, if I had one city to visit for five days, it would be Paris. Okay. You know. And they don't, uh, they don't hate Americans? Oh, they despise Americans. Okay. <laughs> but so do I. So, you know, we have something in common. <laughs> What's to not despise about Americans? I mean, this is a country where there's a guy running for president who is a convicted felon who has been found guilty of rape, okay, uh, uh, who's running for president of the United States, and 50% of Americans are on his side. I mean, what does that say about America? That says your chances of bumping into a Trump person is 50% in this country. It's horrible. Well, it always has been. Well, you know, I mean, when I was growing up, uh, we had all our problems. Uh, we had things like the, uh, I don't know if you... Remember the McCarthy hearings, you know, and the House on American Activities subcommittee hearings and crap like that. And so, I mean, we've always been kind of a horrible country. You know, I mean, we would go, oh, America, best place on earth. No, not really. Not really. I mean, I would, if you want to go to Paris, you'll find a much better uh, situation over there than we have here. 
Um, but, you know, here we got all these people yelling and screaming at each other and loving a, a basically a dictator. You know, I mean, I just, it's amazing. To, it's amazing to me that anybody can even be for uh, uh, Donald Trump. It just, it just, especially after that last debate. I mean, you know. I mean, I like cats and dogs for dinner just as much as the next guy, but that was a ridiculous <laughs> statement. <laughs> I did not see it, but heard it was bad. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing that anybody who's running for president of the United States would make such an outlandish claim and still be in the running. You know, I mean, yeah, uh, 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 Kamala is uh, uh, ahead of him in the polls uh, by about 5 percent. But there's still is that 45 percent that likes Trump. What does that say about America? You know, maybe it's just restored my faith in America sucking, you know, <laughs> but, you know. All you all you want to do is be able to do your little comedy skits and sketches, you know, and make a living and not have to put up with this crap. And you're not a political comic, so none of this is your good for you. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think there are many political comics. So. Have you ever had any piece of material in your act? Because I know your act pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't imagine it changes that much over a year. No. Uh, um, uh, 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 anything in your act that you got booed for because somebody politically didn't agree with what you said? No, no, I've never. Uh, I mean, I, I can't. Think, I can't imagine that you would face that. I think the only political joke I ever had was two thousand when Gore ran against Bush, and I said. Uh, We've reached a point where the top two men in the country are two guys that aren't qualified to be greeters at Walmart. <laughs> that, that was my only political joke ever. And, so, and did he get booed by some people? I actually got a laugh. I think it hit both sides, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, how Durst kind of hit both sides. Remember, he would make fun of both parties. And... Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean... Well, you never had any desire to put politics in your act. Right? No, I think if you, because you're going to lose close to half, no matter who you make fun of, you're going to lose close to half the audience, right? Well, it could be also, I mean, I, nobody goes to see Durst unless they're to the left. You know, they don't go to see Durst because they want to hear some good right wing humor. Right. I mean, let's face it, people uh, uh, discriminate. Against those people who don't agree with them, right? So, if you do, you're doing politics and you're putting down Donald Trump, there are those people who are immediately going to discount you as not being funny. You, I mean, you could still be funny and be anti-Trump, or you could be funny and be pro-Trump. Although I find that hard to believe, uh, but you know. But you, so you've never had to deal with the whole political problem more than no, anything no. else. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it makes a, a lot of sense that, uh, that you just, I mean, you, you, and you didn't do this out of, a, out of any desire to, to keep everybody happy. I think you did it more because that's where, what you, where you figured your comedy was. All right. You know, you defined yourself. And, uh, you know, um, but I, I'm sorry to hear that you haven't been working lately. That, you well, know. kind of by choice. I really don't like it. So I, you don't like doing stand-up anymore? No, I never have. So. Well, then why did you do it? Why did you choose it for a profession? It was the, uh, the hours. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, absolutely. You hate comedy. But you do it because the hours are good. I don't say I hate it, but I just want, I just want it. I like it to go well, but I like to get it over with. Uh, 
Mort Saul told me that Frank Sinatra didn't like singing. He said he'd like to do a good show, but he wanted to get the show over and just hang out with his friends. He, so. he didn't like singing? I never read that anywhere. That he couldn't wait to get the show over with and hang out with his buddies. Oh, so. well, that might be true. Yeah. yeah. That he didn't have to like... He didn't like to go through the process because it took time out of his partying. Right. Yeah. But since that's what he did for a living, he had to do it. Well, that's kind of exactly. how you feel, right? Yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a failed Sinatra. <laughs> okay, so what is it about com doing comedy you don't like? Uh, it's just, just, you know, you got to worry about it going well and and staying up there and keeping their attention for half an hour, forty minutes, which is hard. And, yeah, you know, I would just. Well, you don't usually do 40 minutes, do you? Not anymore, no. And You know who else didn't like to do it? it was Letterman. Letterman didn't like to do stand-up. When he was doing stand-up, they'd ask him, hey, you're doing 15 minutes, and he'd always say, can I do 10? So. Yeah, well, uh, but, uh, you know, Letterman wasn't a very good stand-up. You know, he was okay, but he wasn't, that wasn't his big deal. I mean, he found his place. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, you know, I mean, like, for instance, I would never want to do stand-up. I, 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 you know, as a guy who's fearful of rejection, why do you want to do a stand-up act, for crying out loud? Yeah, it's every night. It's just or sometimes twice a night. Well, you have a certain fear of rejection, don't you? Well, I think we all do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I, so, uh, I often said to myself, I mean, I could never do stand-up. That, that was just not in my wheelhouse. Uh, and yet I could go up, you know, in front of an audience that knew who I was, okay, and do 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in fact, I would go do those openings for those warm-ups for uh, Comedy Tonight. Or not Comedy Tonight, uh, One Night... Is it One Night Stand? Yeah, the things that HBO did. Yeah, yeah. One Night Stand. And I would get a, go up and do about 10, 15 minutes, you know. In the beginning of the week, I had nothing to say. By the end of the week, I had an act. <laughs> you know, because I had done about 10 of these, oh, you know, it's 10 of these warm-ups. And, uh, but I was playing to an audience who knew who I was. So I could simply do stuff that related to the radio show or to me or whatever, and it was pretty easy. But if I had tried to do stand-up in front of an audience saying Omaha, who didn't know who I was, I'd be dead in the water. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be petrified to even go out there. <laughs> you know? I mean, because it's, it's a scary thing. People don't understand how scary it is. Um, I mean, I found, uh, I, you know, I, I guess when I first started out in show business, I, getting up on a stage and even talking to an audience, I, I couldn't do it, you know. And I don't know what point I suddenly became okay at it because I wasn't bad. I mean, you remember me going up and hosting shows and yeah. things like that, and I was fine. But I don't know what that point, that turning point was where I actually started to get good at it or enjoy it. And part of it had to do with the acceptance by the audience of what I was already doing. I had this radio show, and that gave me the authority, shall we say, on stage, which is, of course, as you know, the most important part of comedy is authority. So, um, But you, uh, you know, it, uh, I'm surprised to hear you say you didn't like doing comedy. <laughs> really? No, really, you've never I... said that to me before. Really? I thought I had. So. No, no. I always thought you liked it. I always thought you looked at it as a way to... You You were a true professional. You looked at it as a way to earn a living. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. And make yeah. money and get out. So. Yeah, and be able to, uh, you know, go to a club and party afterwards. Yeah, it was a good social scene, so... Yeah. You being a very highly sociable person. <laughs> you know. Well, virtually no social life before comedy, so it, was, it opened okay. up some doors. Well, it was, I often said that radio was a great way to get laid. 
<laughs> that was basically probably the best. Yeah, yeah much I mean, more than comedy. I mean, was that one of your motivations? Uh, I think it is for all. Uh, yeah, every, someone said everything men do is motiva motivated by sex. I guess yes. You're absolutely right. We're running out of time here, but the big question I would ask you was, uh, uh, if you couldn't get laid doing comedy, would you have done comedy? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and there gentlemen, that's another <laughs> salient time being spent with Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. See you next <laughs> Thank week. Bye-bye. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that, of course, our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Or Mr. Larry. Or Larry Bubbles. Or Brown. Or Bubs. Or, well, we have lots of names for him. So only one person waiting to talk to us tonight. Hmm. What do you know? Well, well, now we have two. Okay. All right, now we have three. All right. If I wait, will we get four? I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's go to our uh, let's go to our panel. Okay. You know, by the way, still missing this. This hair is not growing back, and that's because of my fall. I just kind of ripped all the hair off of there, and I can't feel any growing underneath it. So Marjorie says it'll grow back eventually, and uh, okay. I uh, I will take her at her word. Okay, let me see here. Where are we going to go here? First of all, let's uh, let everybody in here who is already waiting to come on. And that amounts to uh, three people. Yeah. And, of course, Pam, who is <laughs> helps uh, uh, Jeffrey do his thing and let me now go to our zoom panel there they are ladies and gentlemen there's jeffrey and uh Good. there is uh there's uh alan and there is uh charlie hello to you all hello yeah watched a very good documentary tonight if you have max uh it's called uh stop the steal and it's a whole documentary on Trump trying to claim that the last election was a fake, okay? But the whole story is not told by Democrats. It's oh. told by Republicans. Mm. And it's amazing how many Republicans came to hate Trump. It was just amazing. I mean, Bill Barr is in it. Um, the assistant to uh, Pence is in it. I don't think Pence wanted to do it particularly. I think he's had enough of that. Uh, but uh, anyway, so we, uh, you know, I watch this thing. And, I, you know, the more I watch these things and the more I'm made aware of, of Donald Trump, uh, folks, you know, come on. Uh, if there are any Republicans out there listening to me or planning on voting for Trump, actually, I would like to hear from you, okay, because... Really, this man is a psychological mess. I mean, he's crazy. He's nuts. Yep. Wacko in the head. A sociopath. A, 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 a mal malignant narcissist. Anything else? Huh? Uh, well, I'm, well I, you know, I'm not saying <laughs> this because I'm, I'm, I'm a liberal or because I'm on the left. It's be I say it because it's so obvious yep. to anybody who would look for the for the for it. Now I I know that it, it becomes a problem for you Republicans. Who the hell do I vote for? Well, you know you don't have to vote at all. Okay, you can stay away from the polls that day if you're not happy with the choice. Just don't vote. All right. Yep. Uh, your other choice is, of course, to vote for Kamala, which a lot of you might find a disgusting idea to you. So, again, don't vote. Or go find yourself somebody like Jill Stein to vote for. You know, one of the third-party candidates. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but don't vote for this malignant narcissist for crying out loud. I mean, the man is... I think if we actually send a bunch of shrinks to get together to, to interview him, to talk with him, they would come away with the word to the American public, you can't elect this guy as president. He's crazy. He's nuts. And uh, I'm, I just feel very bad that there are people out there who are uh, going to vote for this guy and, and for the stupidest of reasons. Oh, he's good with the economy. Oh, well, that's bullshit. Yeah, he's not. He, he, he can't even take care of his own companies. If it weren't that we were running for president and he's using all that money that you're sending him to take care of his lavish lifestyle, he'd be broke by now. He doesn't have a penny to his name that, you know, he hasn't gotten in some way uh, running for president. Running for president has become a profession for him. Okay? So I really don't understand people who, who are that way. Here comes so, J here uh, comes Jason McKinney, by the way. Uh, so yes. JT what? Uh, Trump Media is down to 1355 is what it closed today, down a dollar 15. It was at 60 or 65 or 70 when did, it first opened. Today's the day he had to sell it, right? Or he, he could, could sell it. Or could, could sell, sell it. it. And when he said last week that he wasn't going to sell because it's a huge loss, he, he, he would, um, you know, the stock went up for a couple of days and then it's dropped from about $22 when he said that down to today's close at 1355. Well, the other thing is if he goes out and sells, let's say, a large chunk of his stock, the worth of that stock will go down precipitously. Yes. It could go under $10. You know, if it goes under five, I might buy it. Who knows? It's speculative uh, at that point. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want anything to do with it. You gonna buy his digital currency? Huh? You gonna buy his digital currency? Y yeah, right. Oh. Yes, yeah, so Trump Bitcoin. There's no. nothing better than Trump Bitcoin. Right. You know, it's funny. He doesn't even know what Bitcoin is. They asked oh, him he's, to talk he's... about it, and he had no idea of what it was. Just He's called it a scam before in the past. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I think the only thing worse than if Trump becomes president is if he dies in office and we end up with Vance. Sticky yeah. pants, Vance. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Starts I just... this rumor of, of people eating in, in, in Iowa, eating their <laughs> dogs and cats, and then, then admits that it was all made up by him. Now he's again defending it in the news. Yeah, no, he no, uh, he is just uh, he is just uh, a piece of work. Did you see how the, like the true story came out of where it all started, where a lady called in about her missing cat, right, right, and they, yeah. the cat was found in the basement. In the basement, right, yeah. right. I saw that in news today, and, and the she's woman... like so apologetic for it. And I, I was talking to somebody I work with, and they still believe it because they say the geese are missing. Well, like, do you realize geese are migratory? Like, yeah, they move. yeah sometimes they just take <laughs> up and leave. You know? In the shape of a V a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, it's amazing. It is just amazing how the, the people are following this guy and, and, and believe in him. I mean, there's nothing to believe in. Trump I, asked Ravashami to go talk in, in um, Ohio today. Uh, whatever that city is that's there, um, that this is all going on. And Phil sends me a link to it. And I said, Phil, it's all over the news that the room was packed with Republicans for Trump. I mean, you know, the questions they were asking, I watched part of it. Everything you can tell, it's Republicans. It wasn't just a a, a sample of this. Listen, and a uh, listen of that. I, I got to say this. He's not here, but uh, Phil is an idiot. Okay, just a plain idiot. I mean, if he can even follow this guy now after all that's gone on. And again, I say, you don't have to vote for Kamala. You can vote for a third party or don't vote at all. But don't vote for this guy because you don't want to see him president of the United States. 
You, you can still vote for Robert Kennedy in a lot of states, too. Yes, you yeah. can, actually. <laughs> actually. But the third, see, see, the the latest with, see the latest with Robert Kennedy? There's no. this woman, I can't remember which magazine or which uh, news service, who got fired because she was having an inappropriate relationship with Robert Kennedy Jr.? Oh. Jesus now Christ, it was. It was she said it wasn't sexual, but that it was flirtatious uh, in emails. Well, I wonder what what's her name is thinking of this right now. Yeah. I, I, I've been waiting for that marriage to end anyway because I, she. I don't think she can honestly believe in 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 what uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. believes in, which again, like Trump, is only Robert Kennedy Jr. I still can't wait. I swear there's going to be some hardcore evidence coming out that Trump is banging that one conspiracy theorist. Oh, what's her name? Yeah. You know, I'm sure he is. Wasn't Guaranteed. It, but, but nobody Wasn't in it? the press has the guts to ask it at a press conference. Hey, are you, you know, not. You know, come what does nicely. Melania think about you banging this lady? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, uh, are, yeah you, really. are you banging her? <laughs> you know, or are you having sex with her? Is so, the relationship uh, more than just. Friendship. P. Diddy got arrested this week for all this sexual stuff. Is that right? Is yep. it P. Wait a minute. Diddy? What are you? What are you doing? You're moving us off the track. Oh no, this is this is on the track. Yeah. So what... I, it would be. He has like forty-four thousand hours of porn. Wouldn't it be great if Trump was in one of them? <laughs> he has forty-four thousand hours of porn. Yes. Uh, well, he, he got his. I don't know. Was it is it P Diddy or somebody? Puff Daddy, oh. yeah. Sean hey, Diddy Combs. Yeah, Sean. Well, how right, does that have right. to do with what we were talking about? Oh well, because I'd love to see Trump in some of those videos. Well, that's just that, because like Trump was involved with what's his name too, right? The, uh, right, uh, yeah. what's yeah. his name? Uh, killed that's himself right. supposedly yeah. in prison. Right. So yeah. P Diddy's there for drugging underage minors and no, and allegedly, adults. allegedly. Sure, sure. What do you mean, sure? Allegedly. Well, they got the videotapes array. I don't care. It's uh, it's alleged, okay, until he's found guilty. This is America. We don't find somebody guilty because you don't like him. I don't know. We're finding Trump guilty of January 6th, then he hasn't been found guilty. (laughs) Well, because the trial hasn't started yet. Right. But he's assumed he trial innocent. by combat. Well, no, but trial I mean, I, uh, you know, I really it bothers me. The one thing that's always bothered me constantly was when we don't assume innocence over guilt until it's proven. You know? Yeah, but when you watch it and live and all no, of America you, uh, watched uh, it live. I, let me let me ask uh, Alan this question. <laughs> Alan, did were you invited to any of those parties that P Diddy had? No. Were were you ever in his uh, uh, sphere of influence? Have you ever known the guy or hung with him? Then how do you know any of this to be true? How do you know that Trump's really running? What? What does that have to do with what I'm just saying? Because the media says so. I don't know. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. I'm just trying to talk to you about, um, in America, we have a presumption of innocence. And, and you know, I mean, I even think, like, the way we use bail is we use it as a punishment, and it shouldn't be used as a punishment because a person is not guilty until proven so in a, in a you know. And minorities usually get the high fines and go to jail because they can't yeah. afford them mm-hmm. while they're waiting for trial. That's right. And the Caucasians usually get a low bail. Even if they're a flight risk, like Trump. Yeah. And, and, uh, oh, but that mindset has been backfiring a lot lately because we've been letting a lot of freaking bad criminals out and letting them re commit crimes. So, like, where? What, give me like, all example. over. Like, well, give me an example. The example is like most of the crimes that are happening right now in Detroit are people who have already been arrested and they got like some BS bail and they got out and they go out and they recommit a crime again. Yeah. And well, then they end up killing somebody the second time. Part, of the, part, of, the pro- pro- part of the problem there, uh, Jason, is the fact that we don't have the financial wherewithal to try all these people and to go ahead with, the, with, with a aggressive conviction of them. 
as fast and speedy trial. I, I agree on that. Maybe it should yeah. just be quicker to get to trial instead that, of that, sitting very, and waiting very, in jail for a month before you go to your, you know. Very good idea. trial is a strange term because, you know, in most cases, a speedy trial for like a homicide could be three or four years. Yeah. But to me, a speedy trial is next week. Well, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that uh, they don't have the wherewithal, a lot of these communities, no. to do I all agree. the all the aggressive uh, prosecution they should do. Uh, Tax the rich. What? Tax the rich. Then you'll have the resources to do that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know. Tax the ones who can afford it. But all I'm saying is, is that, like, for instance, when you talk about the crime in Detroit, I mean, to begin with, uh, here's a myth that, that we have more crime in America today than we have in the past. Actually, we have far mm -hmm. less crime. And that's what kills me. There's this guy running right now. In his commercial, he says, crime is up and wages are down. Actually, Such wages are up and crime is down. A exactly. You know, you, you want to be honest about it. You can sit there and say, you know, inflation is higher than wages have been increasing. That would be a truthful mm -hmm. statement. But, you know, stop boldface lying in your ads. No, actually, uh, we have one of the – our economy is in pretty good shape right now. It's one <laughs> it's, of the best economies in the world. I had somebody I, a friend I work with on Facebook put, you know, if you're better off now than you were four years ago, you're probably here illegally. And my response was, um, are you not investing in your 401k? <laughs> you yeah. know, because, and are you locked in your house and you can't Listen, find toilet paper? I, I, because I, I, that's what it was four years ago. I looked I at, I'm here I, illegally. I looked at my, uh, my portfolio today, which I tend not to do, especially when the market goes down precipitously because you're going to get very depressed, okay? <laughs> uh, and it went down precipitously. <clears throat> A couple of months ago, and I got very depressed when I looked at how much the money I had just invested had gone down. Well, today I looked at it, and if I add everything up and the money I've already and money I've already spent, I'm back to what I was, what I had before plus, and I've spent some money in the meantime. So I really have made money in the last couple of, you know, and this isn't a four hundred one k or anything. It's just, you know. I'll say in the last year, I made $100,000 in my 401k. Really? So I, I'm doing pretty damn good. Yeah. So, you know, over four guess, years. No. So are, you know, is you your life better to today than it was four that. years ago? My my life's great, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm a union worker. My wife is a union worker. We both have decent jobs. We make good money. Like... I, all these fluctuations in the market don't really affect us because we have contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, they have all these myths going. Trump would like you to feel that the the uh, you know the the money you're making, you're making the, the wages are down. That uh, you know, all kinds of money is 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 down. And the fact is that everything's pretty much on the upside now. My stock portfolio is worth more than it's been in 20 years. See? Good example right there. Uh, right. And they want to keep on like throwing out with gas prices. You know, which... Well, the gas prices they're, they're, are high, but they've come down in California. Uh, right. But they're, well, they're, well, down under, when, they're down to under $3 in some areas. When Trump was in office, though, gas was like $1.78 a gallon. But they were also paying people to take oil because they couldn't do anything with it because nobody was driving because everybody's locked in their house. Right. Right. Our our gas for the car is substantially less than it was uh, three weeks ago. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, whoever wants to say that things are terrible... I'm sorry, I did the, the uh, you know the statistics don't show them uh, as as true. Gas prices in California are probably the highest in the country. They because, always have been yeah. because you've got you California. We have taxes. well, they have those extra taxes that are thrown onto right. it. If you chopped out all those taxes, your gas would be like two dollars a gallon. You or know, like that. Yep. but it, it it's horrible. I remember. What do you think of my lifetime I've seen as the lowest price for gas? 14 cents. 
Thirty-eight. He's close. Nine cents. Well, I, uh, nine. Yeah, I cents. remember twenty-nine cents a gallon. Cents. Twenty-nine well, is the lowest. Well, no, I no, uh, nine cents, and I'll tell you why it was nine cents because they yeah. back then they had a thing called uh, price wars on gasoline. Yeah. And the prices would start going down like crazy. And what it was was you had guys like Standard Oil who maybe, let's say there was a corner, there was an intersection. And on this side was a, uh, a gasoline station, uh, maybe an independent. And on the other one was uh, Chevron. But they couldn't mm -hmm. sell their gas cheaper than the guy who was the independent. So what they did is they started a thing called... Uh, uh, oh, Mad Dog. What was the name of the uh, company? Uh, but they started a a uh, gas company called the Ma Wild Dog. I can't remember. Somebody, somebody, write me. Um, Help us out, Kevin. Your father it, owned the gas station. Uh, no, I, I, I. But it had, a, it had a weird, a weird name to it. Um, I'll remember it in a second. And they would put that on the other corner. And then sell gas for less than the independent could sell it for. Then the independent would go broke, have to shutter up his store. They would then shutter up this this mad dog or wild dog uh, uh, gas company, and all that was left standing was the Chevron station. Ta-da! And that's why sometimes you had price wars. And I saw them yes. go down to I, I believe nine cents, maybe eight cents. Yeah, the lowest I can remember is about twenty nine cents. When how I about you, nine. Kevin? What's the lowest you remember it? Twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. I used to fill up my mini bike and the lawnmower for twenty five cents. <laughs> <laughs> I remember nine cents. Yeah, I'm yeah. the youngest buck on the show, and I do remember ninety nine cents, and I swear I remember seventy nine cents one time. <clears throat> yeah, well, I definitely remember ninety nine cents because when my dad's gas station, we had only had the. Um, Two digit gas pumps. So yeah. the two digits oh, wow. and then the point. <laughs> that was a problem. Yes, you remember when they had when they had high school. When they had always, to add whenever the we changed the price on them, we yeah. had to we had to switch it back to like fifty cents and then charge double. Mm -hmm. Until they came out with a three digit gas price. Right. And that happened while I was in pumps. high school. I yeah, remember. we always used to say, Okay, it's fifty cents, but remember we're charging you double, you know, and that whole bit. But yeah. yeah, that was back in the days when you had to manually go in there and open up the front of it and then move the key over and, and change the gear. I, I just that. remember as time as time went on when you put your uh, your, your uh, the pump in the, you know in the gas uh, hole, hole nozzle, in yeah. the car. What do we call it? The fuel hole. The nozzle in the car. Yeah. Nozzle in the car, uh, and you click it on. It would take a while to get to a dollar. By mm -hmm. the time I left California, if it blinked, it got to a dollar. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, remember my dad. You blink and it gets to a hundred dollars. Yeah. For two bucks. And I guess I'm old enough that I still actually remember somebody actually pumping gas for me. <laughs> oh no, they, oh, they yeah. do you know in New Jersey they still have to? Yeah. Really? Oregon, yeah. Oregon too. Oregon has places Oregon. that you can do it, and Oregon has places you don't have to. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I was just there last week. I was just there last. Oh, but I remember you would pull into a like a Richfield gas station, and you'd be invaded by like about four guys who were all attacking the car at one time. Yeah. Check in your gas. Check your oil. Wash your windshield. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, greasy tie. <laughs> they, they, no, they were they were like latex ties or something. Oh, they no, were, they were they were ties. You know, there were some there were some bow ties, were bow ties, nylon ties. Or, well, they had we, used use them, we used the back of them to check the dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one guy would check your tires, another guy would check your oil, another one was doing your windshield, another one was pumping the gas. I, mean, I would pay a few cents a gallon extra for that. Yeah, but in in uh, in uh, in New Jersey, they have somebody who comes out to your car and pumps the gas for you. Yeah, that's they the still job. do up in Oregon. In some of the some of the stations we pulled into, I pulled into one, two, three, four, five, six gas stations, and probably four of them pumped the fuel for me. Wow! So you get out to pump it, and they say, "No, I'll get it for you." And then a couple of them said, "You know, it's there's a sign there. It says you can self serve if you." Well, want. that's incredible. If you think? Yeah. About how it, much do you save by self service in Oregon? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> not in Oregon. 
but they got a little tax thing and i meant to take a picture of it but the taxes on there were all point point one nine point two five you know what i'm going geez if that was california it'd be one point three one right. <laughs> right 15 cents 20 cents we probably pay dollar seventy five two dollars a gallon for gas here uh i'd have to look but it, it is pretty high well what's added on there now in california oh, excise earth tax you know federal tax yeah you know I, it, 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 am tax, i mistaken you know. or is maybe the added taxes equal to the actual cost of the gasoline Probably. what's that it is the cost of the extra added things is the taxes on the gasoline not pretty about much a third of the gallon about it's a third of the cost of a gallon. Really? About a third of a cost? Yeah. I thought it was more than that. No, no, it's about a third. And then it changes, you know, when the when the weather changes here in California, they, they put more Winter oxygen blend, in summer it. Blend. They put different chemicals in it and stuff like that, so they change it for that, too. Yeah. The formulation is different. The summer they, blend. So they say. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, screw that. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I don't I mean I don't own a car I haven't owned one in 15 years because living in New York wh wh why are you going to own a car you know right. uh, you're in New Jersey right Charlene oh yeah that's why I had a call because you mentioned gas pumping in New Jersey yeah they pump it <laughs> right am I right yes yes that in Hawaii maybe I don't know two states in New Jersey no, uh, uh, um Brian, uh, Kevin just said up Oregon. in uh, up in uh, uh, Oregon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so. I hope they don't change it because I have, would have no idea how to pump that gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, I would you know. California is about sixty-eight point one cents per gallon. Reading that too, but that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right, but that could be. I don't know. I didn't read the whole thing, but it could be less some other plus country. there's federal excise tax that's california tax yeah there and is there's there federal is. excise tax and federal department of of transportation okay, now it says tax here, average 360 a gallon too yeah well we're paying about five five fifty a gallon around here right now yeah i do love watching average. those videos of like kids who are going they're filling up their car and they don't know how to pump gas and like almost trying to put it in the tires <laughs> yeah. i just hand them a dial a rotary phone yeah, right. they could put that in for three days and try and or figure. They grab the diesel one. When when I was oh. teaching my kid how to pump gas, uh, I was telling them, you know, all right, stop, it's done. You know, pull the gas, you know, out. He pulled it out, but he didn't turn the pump off, and he pointed right at me. He sprayed oh. gas no. all oh, over God. me, oh, and God. he felt so bad. But I was telling them afterwards, I'm like, see, you'll well, never well, do that again, it, will well, you? Well, well, when the gas is completely filled up the tank. It, there it it, it off. turns itself off right right so but it wasn't full yet he was just he was pulling it out because i told him all right you know that's enough you know pull it out and hold it out but didn't i'm trying to remember how you off. do that you pull you pull on a, again I, right, I don't know in stop. california if the pump will continue with if you have it locked there's you know you pull the pump up and there's a little switch there. in the back to yeah. lock it to yeah. hold the yeah. thing on so the pump is still on. So he pulled it out and, and then didn't when, squeeze when, a trigger. And I just thought that that was just normal because I. Yeah. And, and when it's filled up, it stops that it. way. I'm sorry. No, it stops it. It still does. In California, they have a hose inside a hose. And one hose is a vapor recovery. And once it gets to a certain point, It'll shut off, and you can't put right. any more gas. What in is the, the vapor recovery? It I never had that when I was smog. in California. For smog shit, I guess, or something. And of course, they tax you for that too. That that's what stops your pump. Like if your gas tank is full, it stops. Well, no, no. There's a sensor in there that catches the flow coming. That's right. That's the vapor right. is just taking the vapor and putting it back into the tank, so that the truck can come and put on its vapor tank. And when it fills up, it takes the vapor back to the plant. And then right. the plant takes you've, it. You've completely it lost me. But maybe it's because I haven't owned a car in 15 years. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. If you have the lock on and you pull the pump out, it's still going to spray yeah. because it's right. not, you know. You, that's... Can pull, you can pull the foreskin back and still pump. <laughs> <laughs> it still works. It's now the, it's I understand the little square it. Now thing I understand. inside the nozzle that senses you're, you're the You're right. You can, you can pull the, the, the 
flexible. Yeah, foreskin's a good name for it. The the rubber thing and it will still continue. Because everybody that goes in pretty much to to get a gas fills the tank up, right? I fill it up every time. Yeah. 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 I, I always pump it. They say not to, but I always pump it full. No, don't do that. I'll extra I call, pump I call it. it. Let it stop it. when it stops. It's I bad for your it. car. Really? Why, Even it why off it, to why, the nearest dollar. Why is it yeah. bad for the car? Yeah. Because your tank's only supposed to hold so much. Yeah, they tell you don't do that now in newer cars. Like in the old days, you could do it, but don't do it now. That's yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. It, I, I'm like, I, I, so, BS. I have a 36-gallon uh, tank. And I can get about 35 gallons in there if I play with the pump a little bit. Yeah, well, I'll listen to the engineers who are the experts and listen to what they tell me to do. So it's it, 60 I, cents for state tax and then another yes. 18 cents of federal tax. Yeah. And let's see, 58 cents. Uh, six, yeah, so it's 60, yeah. 78 cents. Sounds Plus worse the than California the Air tax. Quality Board tax. Yeah, they got some other. Remember stuff. that old tea plus, tax? Plus sales the old tax. Days, it sounds worse than that. Probably the vapor tax and everything else. Right. I had one auto mechanic tell me you're not supposed to let the gas tank get less than a half a gap, half halfway full because then it's more inefficient. So you can't yeah, fill it up all the way, and you can't let it get more. Yeah, than half. they say that too. <laughs> You'd be going by the gas station twice a day. Well, when <laughs> the gas gets that. expensive, that's what I do anyway. So because it's less on your pocket. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't know if I get that, though. Uh, I mean, why can't you fill up your tank all the way? Why is that I do bad? every time. I it's still like spillage. Gallons. It's like spillage or something. I don't know. It's not no. good to let it go over. No. Once it's no. pulled, I've heard that. Don't go over trying to even it out to an even dollar. Yeah, it's just when, just when the pump stops, it. you're supposed to stop because there's like a yeah. vapor thing in yeah, your tank. I think that's what it is. Yeah. If, you not that four, if you go to one gas station, go to four different pumps, they'll stop in four different times. Yeah. yeah. Probably. So if it backs up, it's going to stop. Yes. My work because truck, the... man, I can't even freaking pump gas right in. I have to put the gas... A nozzle and upside down for it to even uh, pump I, gas in this in whole my discussion, truck. I'm, hearing, I'm, hearing I'm hearing an okay. unbelievable. I'm hearing an unbelievable. They have a curved neck that goes too fast, yeah. and if the water, if the yeah. fuel backs up, it hits that sensor. In this whole water. discussion, I'm hearing any number of sexual innuendos. <laughs> that I can Absolutely. To. When you're sticking something in a, when you're sticking something in a pipe. We're not I mean, offending you, are we, Charlene? No, no. <laughs> Nothing what did they call her. that in my writing class? Uh, oh, God, it was a, 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 I forget what he called it, a phallic symbol. The a phallic Tony might be offended, but not Charlene. <laughs> well, I call it sexual innuendo, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, it could be taken that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so, you know, I mean, with this whole thing about gas, I mean, gas prices are quite low right now. That doesn't mean they're not going to go back up come summer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And once again, it'll be Biden's fault, you know. So. Yep. I know. I think it's still Obama's fault, isn't it? Yeah. It I is. think, you know, I mean, right. for all people who want to complain about Biden, the fact is, while he's been president, things have been pretty good. You know, yeah. I'm doing fine. You know, uh, but inflation is up. So that's what people are talking about. And, and it is. Inflation is up. And that's your one complaint. You can really have well, a legit but, but inflation, argument. On. Inflation is cyclical; it goes up and down on its own. Yeah, it, it doesn't does. matter what president's in office, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Oh wait, my God, well, Brian! Wait, wait, raised... wait a minute. Has Brian oh. become a wrestler? <laughs> where is the boxing gloves? Wait, yeah, where are you? Oh, that, oh, oh, you just got out of the pool. Oh, is that your pool in your new place? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so you know, we man. Just, we're just hi, farming. Hmm? Say hi. Say hi. It's Adrian. Hi. Oh, it's Adrian. Yeah. There's Adrian. Yeah. Hello, Adrian. No, say hi. Hold on. Hi. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there oh. we go. There's the two of them oh, together. Hi, oh, honey. Hi. Hello. Over, hi. Going over for a swim, are you? Yeah, it's so nice out here tonight. Yeah, so we just got done. Really? Okay. Is that pool? Your pool? Only, yeah, and then uh, it's got a waterfall and fountains, and then look what's on TV. No, oh, oh, hey, hi, cool. everybody, how are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm on TV. I don't know how this works. <laughs> look, <laughs> everybody's on. <laughs> Wait a minute, I should be waving in a second, but anyway, 
Uh, so no, it's really that pool is lovely. Nice. Yeah, he's got a great place. Yeah, there. and then uh, I, there's pergola. I got to do something with this whole area. Pergola, here. pergola, not a pergola. It's a pergola. <laughs> pergola, pergola. Sounds like sounds like Phil and nuclear nuclear. <laughs> right, right, pergola. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. So. So anyway, it's an, sounds like a nice house you got yourself there. Yeah, it's just an hour away from everybody, but it's really nice. Yeah, we'll <laughs> stop by and knock on the, the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He buys and sells houses. He buys and sells cars. No, 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 no. Brian, in so many ways, I am so jealous. He looks like he's going to box Muhammad Ali tonight. You're right, Alex. He looks like he's going to do a, a boxing match with Muhammad Ali tonight. Yeah. Can you place yeah. bets? Yeah. I, got, uh, I got Ali in the first. <laughs> Ali did. <laughs> God rest his soul. Hmm. Uh, so anyway. Did you ever yeah. get rid of spider problem? What? Who had spider problems? Yeah, I will did. never get rid of my spider problem. I don't care how much chemicals I use on my house every year, they'll be back. Wow. We don't have any spiders <laughs> here. We don't even have any mice here. Or rats. Bed, bed bugs. Oh, what about cockroaches? No, yeah, we, cockroach. I've seen in the entire time, we've been here almost 15 years, okay? Wow. One cockroach. Wow, that's, that's really good. good. Yeah. That's a big building, too. Well, they come by and they constantly spray. Oh, so they spray? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I haven't seen it, and now I'll see one, but I haven't seen I a cockroach here. I saw it. one cockroach, and that was it. And we had one mouse, mm. and that was it, you know? It, uh, the last time I was in Chicago, I stayed at the Palmer House Hilton in the Loop, and I had to change rooms because there were more cockroaches mm. than there was carpet. Oh, my God. Wow. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. They change. They give it a different room. Different well, cockroaches are like when I was down in my other apartment down on Houston Street, and it was a newer apartment house than this one, obviously. Uh, I had just an in horrible infestation of cockroaches. I had to hire somebody to come in huh? from the outside. Didn't you say you called them Eichmann, you remember? I, ca Eichmann? I called her the Eichmann of roaches. Yeah, you remember yeah. saying it? <laughs> you get them over again. Oh, she came in, yeah. and she just started spraying. She pulled the, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, ref the uh, wow. oven uh, yeah. out of the wall, p p and then sprayed underneath in <laughs> these Roaches are running everywhere, <laughs> really? and then there was this one area where there was a kind of like a box thing, and she sprayed in there, and they all came running out. Oh, geez, I'm <laughs> but I, after that, I never saw another roach. And the problem we had was we didn't have roaches till somebody down the hall moved out, yeah. and they oh, had a lot yeah, of yeah. roaches. And the roaches then got to go somewhere where there's that's right, yeah. no more food yeah. there. So yeah, they came to your house. So the idea of how you get, yeah, but but you know we were we were we were all roached up down there, but here I haven't seen a single roach, you know. Isn't uh, there one next year, Beth? The worst, the worst, <laughs> the, the worst vermin, the worst vermin I've seen here are landlords. But anyway, <laughs> and believe me, I'd rather have roaches than landlords. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, anyway. So, you know, I just I just keep saying that I don't understand how even a Republican can can make excuse this guy's behavior today. You know, and we hate to talk about Trump all the time, but this one is definitely one we got to talk about today. He said that if he loses the election, it'll be the Jews fault. Oh, yeah, no, you're what kidding the hell me. Blame, no. He said that, Alex? For yeah, real? He did. He yeah, he did that. Say yeah. I missed that one. He was, he was at, at the Jewish, a, uh, he was at a Jewish uh, anti-Semitic uh, uh, meeting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. And he said if he loses the election, it'll be the Jews' fault. What that's are they, good. like 2% of the population of America? I, that's what I understand, <laughs> at least at, at, the, at the latest count. Yeah. Well, maybe all the Jews are supporting Kamala this time. Uh, that could be doesn't matter. Too. Two percent. You know, nice. here comes yeah. Bree. Yeah. Well, of course, here the comes Bree. He's like. eating. No, like, you call that. Yeah. Oh, it's dinner or lunch, right? Uh, lunch. Lunch. <laughs> lunch. Yeah. It was a cat or dog. Are you in Springfield, Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> my dog's missing. Hey, my have you seen that Trump eat the cat video? 
Eat the cat. Eat, 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 eat the cat. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes. Well, there there are places in this world where they eat dog. I think the, in the in Indonesia, there's some cultures that eat dog. Vietnam. Am I right about that? Vietnam. Huh? Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. We would we we're driving a a city tour, and then uh, yeah, uh, they said, "See that one word? That's dog." <laughs> oh, that's unruly. Mm. Hey, but if you think about it, we eat pig uh, all the time, there. and pigs are smarter than dogs. Yep. Yeah, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. The and they make, and, and, and by the way, they make better pets. They I make think the National Pig Association is going to vote yeah. against Trump. Well, what about cows? Right, cows. India, India worships cows, and yeah, they, we they chop them up. They're right. good eat. Yeah, we're cows are stupid. I cows. <laughs> well, I told you at the time that we were in uh, we were in uh, Norway. Uh, and uh, at the Olympics, and uh, boy, we ate these hamburgers that were just great next door to the studio where the studio was. And we, uh, it got to the point where we were eating like three of these burgers a day. They were so good. And finally, I said, "Boy, these are great. Where did you get the meat for this?" And I said, "Oh, that's reindeer." Yeah. And I should have known with that uh, there was a glowing meat. nose in my hamburger once, and I <laughs> I should have known. You know. Yeah, should have been a good one. Bambi. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah, Bambi. No, Bambi. Bambi's a different story altogether. Yeah. Disney, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Boy, when so, Bambi's so, mommy got killed, I was just yeah, a mess. Does, I was yeah, just a right. mess. So, that, that was awful. Yeah. 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 I often what an said, awful movie. everybody went, oh, we're going to send our kids off to a Disney film. Yeah, sure. Learn all about how to be a racist. Learn how to be, uh, you know, mm -hmm. how to how to uh, uh, kill off Bambi's mom. Yeah. Yeah. I often, here's one of the things I didn't like about Disney. I often felt that the witch in Snow White looked mm. Jewish. The big nose. big nose. And I figured that was his way of going, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you know. That witch. was a little anti-Semitic. I always thought it was, but that's me, you know. But anyway. So uh, again, let's guess what uh, what uh, uh, Brie is having for lunch. <laughs> is it dollars. the same thing you always get? It, it is. I always come here on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I just I like it. It's it's inexpensive. And it's good quality, and I can change my lottery tickets up the streets. Get some uh, fresh vegetables and fruits. Oh, it's good. Do they include sea urchin? I think that I'm sure that they have that. By the way, you by know, the way, it, it, interesting, thing. interesting little <laughs> trivia question I, I found, and 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 I'm going to ask that uh, Charlie not answer this because wow. Charlie is so good at math and everything. But the mm. question is, on the day they change to daylight savings time. When it's four o'clock in the morning here in New York, what time is it in California? Maybe one. Six. Four o'clock in New York. It's uh, one it's eight hours uh, ahead of us. What? No, not six. Oh, no, we're, th we're but normally it's we're three, three hours three three ahead of you. Yeah. Right. The three hour difference. No. Nope. Right. No. Nope. So one. No. Nope. Nope. Because you lose an hour, I think. It's always three hours. No. No, with daylight. Oh, it's just a question. It's on, it's on the number. day, the, the night that we go to daylight savings time. It's uh, midnight. It's an hour That's two. right. There yeah, you, you get go. It's a trick two. question. <laughs> midnight. Yeah. yeah. yeah All you got to do is watch the ball drop in New York. <laughs> and it happens at nine o'clock on TV here. Yeah, or, but the me. day we go to daylight savings time, <laughs> Hour, you fall back an hour. I mean, you, you turn yeah, but, ahead an hour but in it, New York it, before you turn away ahead an hour in California. Who so gives a, a shit? I haven't sleep. done it yet. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so it's four hours. It's the yep. one time that there's a four hour difference. <clears throat> uh, for three hours. Yeah. So. Four hours for three hours. You all flunked that one. I got it right. It's after, easier. After, <laughs> try at, two. After everybody <laughs> got it wrong. Who gives a crap? I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah.
Well, most some of us are. Yeah. Some of us stay up well past two. <laughs> oh yeah. Weirdos. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I like to watch what my watch does, you know. Because so I does that mean the less toes you have, the less you have to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's cold. That's <laughs> wrong on so many levels. I save so much time because I don't have to clip those toenails. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if I could have. I got a pedicure today. I wonder if they would have gave me a discount. <laughs> now, do you have a phantom limb there? I mean, do you have phantom toes? Yeah, my toe will hurt sometime, and there's no toe there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, that happens. Especially when a Republican walks by. uh, This is true. This is true. I had a friend in Texas when I was working in Texas, and he got into an accident, and uh, they had to remove his leg. Uh, And he was one of the announcers at the station. And uh, uh, finally, he came back to work, and we didn't know how we would react to it. But you know, you react to something like that pretty easily. You know, once you once you see him with no leg, you go okay. He has no leg. But he said that he wondered what happened to his limb. So he, he, it happened in Tyler, Texas. And on a night, with the time when he went back to Tyler, because that's where he's from, he went to the hospital. And he said, what do you do with my, what did you do with my leg once you chopped it off? And he said, we bury it. And he said, why? And in the doctor's answer, and I swear to you, was to prevent phantom pains. Oh, my God. It didn't work for me. <laughs> well, maybe they incinerated yours. They burned you know. <laughs> or, or donate them to science. But I thought about it, and I went, you know, UC, we know this. UCSF the, gets a lot of them. Huh? UCSF gets a lot of them, because I used to deliver there, and you'd go into the wrong room, and you'd see some weird shit. <laughs> Why would they? Why is it we always get into these discussions right at my lunchtime? Uh, <laughs> we started it. I mean, could you do this Wednesday or Thursday? <laughs> and any, I was thinking, Adrian, poor Adrian, but she's not. Uh, just right. suck it does, up. Does, does any lunch. part of your lunch look like a toe? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Or maybe a blended, blend up the toe. Charlie, do you, Charlie, do you have your big toes? I have my a big toe on one foot, but on my left. The foot, other foot, they all, got them all. All my toes are gone on my left foot. So, so you can't to... wear. So you can't wear thongs, right? Thong no, or... I can't wear thongs. No. Oh, flip flops. You mean sandals? Right? Or you, can't, or you can't wear those. <laughs> I was thinking you meant the other thong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, why stop you wearing it from thong? No, that's <laughs> it's thing. just your toes. Adrian, flip flops. Now, do that you have an ins- do you have an insert in your shoe? Hook between. I don't have any toes. To I do. Do you have an insert in I your do, shoe? Yes. Not I anymore. Do, yeah. I did for a couple of years, but it wasn't worth it. Oh, okay. You I gotta. Just... You probably gotta learn how to walk again because your balance, your toes have a lot to do with your balance, don't they? Yes, they do. Oh yeah. Well, it also ruined his uh, desire to play football. So. <laughs> Why he does baseball instead of softball. Yeah, he just lost to Stanford. Yeah. Who did what? Stanford beat Syracuse on a last minute field, last second field goal. Uh, uh, broke my heart. College ball. Broke my heart. Uh, <laughs> Syracuse was supposed to win that game. Would I be terrible if I said I don't care? <laughs> no. Hey, the University of Texas is number one. Is hey, Alex? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Years. What? Yeah. What'd you say, Jason? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? University well, of Texas. We, well, we don't know who's going to be playing <laughs> in the Super Bowl. Tell you who, man. <laughs> I'm not that stupid. <laughs> who's singing this win. year at the Super Bowl? Didn't they just uh, yeah, ETS Jets? They just you uh, know the Lions. Yeah, the are Jets are looking good. good. Nah. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Come on now. Jesus. Come on. They got killed by the nineties, yeah. All right. Well, go ahead, you guys. Talk about sports. I'll just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> See, you you did your own thing wrong. You should have came back with who do you think is gonna win the Super Bowl? Or you'd get your oh, you oh, know yeah. when you said you went on uh, the sports show. The oh, when I did had to do a sports show. Yeah. I found it was yeah. the easiest thing in the world to do. You know. <laughs> 
You, you could bullshit yourself through a sports show. There's no mm-hmm. question about it. Uh, but no, uh, I. Uh, 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 what was I was going to say? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. I think you were going to say the Lions are going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, what? <laughs> what? I don't think they're even going to get no. in the playoff. No. Oh, be I guess who's going to tell us he has a sports Emmy? I do. Right. I do have a sports Emmy. Dust it off, Alex. The huh? Sports Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> But none of them were for fo- none of them were for football. So you know, I have one. Who, sports who gets your sports at me? Have one. Who gets your sports at me? Who gets my sports right. at me? Yeah. Who are you willing that to? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, I guess I should weld them to somebody. How, how many? You have two, right? You have two of them. Two. I have yeah. one. I have one that was for a performance. Okay, uh, and the other one was for being part of a sports show. Okay. Hey, will your Emmys to anybody you feel like just will your cash to me? <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I'm giving my cash to? What Thank Marjor- you. Marjor- yeah, Marjorie nice. and I have decided who we're giving our money to. Adrian, you're going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, come here. Talk to Adrian Uncle is Alan. well off. As he says from his pool. We're still doing doing our research to make sure that it's the right place for the money to go, but we're thinking of giving it to St. Jude's. Oh, Adrian just changed her name to St. Jude. Yeah, yeah. But the reason (laughs) why, the reason why. She looks unhappy now. Yeah, but, but the reason why is that I watch their commercials. And I like the way they do their commercials. None of those kids are looking pathetic. They're all looking like kids who have gotten on the other side of it and are well and happy and happy to be well. Okay, is wait, a wait a minute, wait a minute. She just found out she isn't getting the money. <laughs> <laughs> look at that sad look. She said, look happy, look sad. She, she looks damn, at everything. Damn, now you're going to have to go pick which McLaren you're going to go drive around. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, has anybody heard anything bad about St. Jude's? No, no, I, no, heard I hear good things. Best. I hear Not good things, yeah. yeah I agree. Shri- Shriners is really good, too. I don't mm-hmm. like what they do in their ads, though. They do the pathetic kids. Yeah, Shriner yeah, does do that. Yeah, and I don't yeah. like that. Ever, uh, ever since uh, the United States. And I'm not giving Way it, by day. the way, I'm not giving it to Cars for Kids. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you. I hate those cars. I don't like those ads. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids. <laughs> it's worse than it's a small yeah. uh, yeah. Ever since right. the United Way. Adrian, I, well, I listen to that. sports talk. And Adrian knows that song. Right when it comes on, the first note, she will start singing. So oh, funny. Cars yeah. for Kids. <laughs> All you need to hear is the first one. Go ahead. Sing the Cars for Kids song, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, Cars for Kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know something? Maybe we should go out and audition for those commercials now. Although those, <laughs> those kids have been doing it so long, they're probably all dead. But you isn't know. it Jewish camp to send Jewish They'll kids to camp? Kids, no. What? The 1 800 cars for kids. That's not Wasn't a Jewish the... camp. No. Yes, it, it is. nothing to do with Jews. Oh, no. Really that that, that was the goes. biggest uh, thing that yeah. was, uh, was that they were misleading people that they were actually, it was for uh, sending Jewish kids to camp. That's what it was That's about. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I I didn't know that. You know, no, yeah. there was a big conspiracy about it for like a few years that they were misleading people. Oh, eighty two cents. What your whole, uh, all your food costs you eighty two cents? No, that's how much your dollar goes there. At St. Jude's, and they say eighty two cents out of every dollar goes to oh, that's the pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty good. Low overhead. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's- yeah. Yeah. You can now, look does all that, that does that up. include the cost of uh, like doctors and things like that? Yep. That eighty two cent that uh, well the eighteen cents. Yeah. So you that's good. That's that's, on, that's uh, damn good. There's a website that you can look all that stuff up on. Yeah. Well no, I looked them up and I looked for bad reviews <clears> about <throat> them and so on. Couldn't find any. Nobody had the anything Christian bad. Christian kids is the worst. What? The, the Christian kids is the worst. They take you out. Some some guys interviewing these kids and just four cents a day and I mean it's horrible. 
Yeah. Don't, just don't look up Danny Thomas and glass tables. I know that. I've actually, <laughs> I, oddly enough, I've actually been to St. Jude's Hospital. I have Shecky too. and I went there because we wanted to go to the Danny Thomas Memorial. Yeah. We oh, I remember see, that story. We, yeah. we wanted to see if they had a glass table there. <laughs> I didn't look for that. I was just there for the hospital itself. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a friend, Alex, and she got really mad when I told her that story. <clears throat> but, then, but I had to Google oh, yeah, does it. Does anybody her. know the story we're referring to or the so called legendary story? He'll no. breathe yeah, while he's eating. Here, but <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. just that they, they say that the Danny way, Thomas AOC in his does office. Not like Jill Stein. It, 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 Alex it, is trying to explain this. Danny Thomas in his office had a glass coffee table, and what he liked to do was to lie under the glass coffee table and have hookers take a dump on it. Okay. <laughs> Now, I don't know if it's true. I Googled it, Alex, because my but friend that, got really mad when I yeah. told her that story. Yeah. And when you Google it, it says there is a known story about that that people have heard about. Yeah. Oh, I, think really? they, I think they wrapped I Danny the Thomas up in saran wrap yeah, well, just in case something accidentally slides off. Well, Thank no, because I, uh, I had a friend about as good who, as uh, who, who, who was a comedy head. writer who went to work for Danny Thomas on the last yeah. TV show he ever did. And mm -hmm. she said that he called her into his office, and she went in there, and he wasn't in the office yet. And she sat down on the couch, and right in front of her was a glass <laughs> coffee table. There's yeah. too many stories. Yeah. 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 It has well, to be. A glass well, I went to Springfield, and there was a cat there. <laughs> <laughs> in a pot. You know something, though? I'm thinking the glass coffee table thing, you know, I don't care. He, oh, he did a good thing there by building yeah. that hospital. And he didn't, oh, yeah. you know, it's one of those guys who decided to build a hospital like that. And he really did it, you know? Yeah. And, and those people going. say that they don't have a bill. You know, that kid goes there for cancer treatments they and they've get, never had a bill. Never, the, parents, like I mean, the parents get put up at motels and it's paid yeah. for. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, Charlene. Me? Yeah. Okay. No, I heard a thing that Johnny Carson, nobody, I didn't know that. He donated to, it's the John W. or H. Carson. Uh, I forget if it's like a cardiac thing or something. He donated all a lot of money when he passed to Well, California, he, had a son who he had a son who died. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize and, that. And that was okay. probably who the hospital was named and after also the Frank war. And also Frank Sinatra had a Barbara Marx and Frank Sinatra wing that he did before they died. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Sinatra built the the biggest hospital in uh, Palm Springs too. For children, I think, because the wife wanted that. Is it for Barbara children? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Well, yeah. all I know is I I don't like these ads where they have these pathetic kids, you know, with yep. tubes up their arms or whatever, and they're looking pathetic yeah. on screen. Won't you help little Bobby? And Dally's with St. Jude's, all these kids are mm -hmm. happy. The only people crying are the parents who are crying yeah. out of gratitude. You know, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't take advantage. It doesn't exploit the kids. And right. that's why I, I... But if they're still putting the amount of money toward the actual end goal, does it... No. You know, it really... It, that's, that's a, is 85 cents. 82 cents is very, is very good. Right. You know, it's right. incredible. Shriners, Shriners is eighty-five. Shriners That's is what I was talking about. Where you're saying they're at the okay. Very. Yeah. Adrian Neary is a hundred percent for her. <laughs> so is Jason <laughs> McKinney. <laughs> yeah. Donate to Jason McKinney. Goes a hundred percent to Jason I'll, McKinney. I'll make sure she gets every penny. That. I'll tell you, when I die, some she can that. have my studio. Go okay. You have a glass table? What'd you say? <laughs> Oh boy! Anyway. Yeah, all all the DVDs in the background. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Look at Charlie's wall next. Yeah, week. Charlie wants those. <laughs> I'll take. I'll take them. Yeah. Anyway. Where's our folder today? What? Where's, Where's our folder today? Our folder today. Yeah. I'm Never Bill. Know. I'm Giller. Oh, oh, yeah, Don, Don Giller. Giller. Oh, yeah. No, we haven't heard from him lately. Uh, no. But anyway, hey, don't, Don don't, don't say it. He'll call at the last minute, and then we'll have to, you know, spend time. 
Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. Thanks, Jeffrey Stein. We appreciate it. Thanks to Alan and thanks to Charlie. And, uh, you know, uh, Jason, nice that the wife has let you out tonight. Right. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Charlene, good seeing you again. Tony, good seeing you. So jealous, Brian. Brian Neary and Adrian. Good night, Adrian. Say good night to your father for me. Uh, and and finally, goodbye to Bree, who's eating uh, Bree. food and and having a hard time because they look like Charlie's toes. Just think oh. of Charlie's toes <laughs> to eat that. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the. Uh, that's the uh, uh, citizen panel for tonight. That's the citizen panel for this week. We'll be assembling again on Monday at 4 o'clock on uh, Facebook. And then we'll see you right back here on YouTube and a lot of other things uh, on uh, Wednesday of next week. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.